The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. This program contains explicit content and subject matter which may be unsuitable for some listeners. Discretion is advised. It's time to get in shape and shape up your health. Welcome to Fitness RX Radio with your hosts, Joe Piatero and Greg Valentino. If you're looking for information about health, training, fitness, and nutrition, then stay with us for the next hour. Now, here are Greg Valentino and Joe Piatero. I don't know about getting in shape, but you're going to laugh your balls off tonight. Isn't that right, Greg? You know, that's funny because I was just laughing at that. If you want nutrition, health, fitness, and <laughs> don't listen up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you how to maybe laugh, maybe a little, uh, you know, webcam uh, sex things going on. We had the uh, female bodybuilders on. But tonight is definitely uh, it's Comedy Central tonight. I think I had said that in an earlier broadcast, kind of getting into, you know, what we got booked for tonight. But, dude, Jim Brewer and Jim Florentine, we're talking about two of the top comics out on the circuit right now. Absolutely. You know, they're, they're funny guys. Both of these guys are funny guys. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, Jim Brewer is, is going to be an awesome, uh, it's going to be awesome talking to him because I've seen him on TV a million times, you know what I mean? I, and I'm a comedy guy, you know, I like to laugh and I love comedy, you know what I mean? And I know you do too, you know? So uh, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, listen, this is a men's interest show. Guys like to laugh. They like to hear about pretty chicks. They like to look at pretty chicks. They like to talk about sports. They want to talk about kicking ass like we had boss root and bar fighting and shit, getting loaded, fucking oh. people up. I mean, this is pretty much, I mean, I, you know, I, I consider myself the average guy. And this is kind of shit that I like to listen to. And I definitely, I mean, Brewer, Saturday Night Live and all of that stuff. The fucking guy stand-up is great. He's on Opie and Anthony all the time. That's my favorite fucking show out there. Next to our show, of course. But you know what I'm saying. But Absolutely. definitely fucking Brewer and Florentine are going to knock everybody's fucking balls up their ass tonight. You know what's funny? I think you just threw more fuck words than uh, Brewer throws. Because he doesn't, he doesn't curse, does he? He's kind of a clean kind of comic in a way, but when yeah. he's on Open Anthony, he has a little fun. He lets it go a little bit. But, yeah, he's definitely uh, he's not the kind of guy that really just gets into the MFs and all of that stuff. He's kind of he's funny as hell, but he, he does it in a way where you don't even realize he's clean because the way he does it, it almost sounds like it's a dirty comic. talks about, you know, all of this getting high and all of this stuff and Metallica. and I mean, just, It almost sounds like that stuff would just be perfectly fit into it. But he's, he's so talented, he doesn't need to use that type of stuff. I mean, you get a guy like me, I got to use it just to get attention. Cause, you know, I'm not a comic. Oh. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we definitely want to get uh, you know, into this show right away. Uh, just want to give uh, everybody a heads up. Coming up, we got some really good guests um, coming up for you soon. Tonight, like we said, we got the, uh, the comics tonight. And then, Greg, we got some great things. to. We got... Jim Kelly from the Buffalo Bills. Talk about going from one end of the spectrum oh to the God. other. Four-time Super Bowl quarterback. Listen, the guy's got no rings. I think it's harder to get to the Super Bowl four times than to get there once and win it. Dude, the guy's a legend. I mean, yeah. come on, Jim Kelly. I mean, he's a legend. I'm actually super-duper looking forward to this because, you know, you and I, Joe, are really big sports guys, you know, and uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, I bet you good fellas from the uh, Christian from our, our website must be going crazy because he's a huge. Oh, he's a Buffalo he's fan. Yeah, a Buffalo fan. Yeah, you know he's what up I mean? there. He's up. He's way upstate New York, so he, yeah. he's a Bills fan. So yeah, he's gonna fucking shoot a load in his fucking pants when he hears that interview. Oh, I'm God. sure. Dude, I'm shooting a load. Jim Kelly, I mean, come on. This is, that's a great. This is. I'm really seriously looking forward to that because, like I said, being a being a sports guy, uh, you know, I, I. I mean, Jim Kelly's a, like you know that he's. A-list, you know, he's top shelf. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Pro Football Hall of Fame, a fucking, you know, so that's going to be at a later date. We're going to get you the date on that. Uh, but let's do tonight's show right now. We got, we got a real special guest here. We have comedian Jim Brewer with us right now. And, Jim, I'd like to welcome you so much to Fitness Rx Radio. This is going to be a great, uh, a great night for us, and I'm really happy to have you guys, uh, have you on board with us. I'm excited, too, because you guys sound like everyone I grew up with. 
<laughs> You're a Long Island guy. I'm a Brooklyn guy. Greg's a Bronx guy. So we're going to talk some shit and have some fun tonight on our radio show. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah. This is, I just want to know if is... Jim's a Yankee fan or a Met fan. That's what I want to know before we start. Uh, all right, well, I think you already know. You, you can narrow that down. I white know, it's going to be a mess. South Shore, White <laughs> Trash, Long Island. What do you mean? I'm John. around. Show's you. over. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you on that, Jim. So we got uh, we don't have much to talk about in that department, but we got a lot to talk about what's going on with you, and we want to make sure everybody check out officialjimbrewer.com. That's B-R-E-U-E-R for the spelling. And Jim's a big Facebook guy, facebook.com slash Jim Brewer. Jim, this uh, Santa Claus ain't coming to town. I was laughing my balls off listening to this. It's a heavy, a heavy metal comedy Christmas song, and you guys are putting a whole album together. Why don't you give us a little info on that? All right, so here's what I'm doing. Now, for years, uh, first I'll start off with the song. The song for years, every year, because I'm a metal head, I like hard rock. Every year I keep waiting for a kick-ass metal album. And every year it's the same thing. They, 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 they metal out jingle or they metal out the last Noel. So I'm like, you know what? I, I'm going to do what I want to hear every year, which is our parents reprimanding the kids because they think they're so uh, deserved every year. Hey, here's my, this is my kids do. Here's my Christmas list. Oh, oh, <laughs> that, how, oh, thank you. Oh, what an amazing list. Um, unfortunately, I have a lot of issues with this list because you're not deserved of half this stuff. So that is basically the song. I think it's a great frustration song for parents and it's telling the kids they got to tighten up. And, um, I, and really... I'm driving it for guys like us that are metalheads, dads, that are going to eat this up, love it. But, uh, you know, maybe it'll expand out a little further. So, And then the record is very family-oriented. Picture, it, to me, I'm actually going to call it coming out of the metal closet, where for, <laughs> for years, guys like like me, the grown up, all my friends, the word, I'd go see Metallica and Anthrax. And my guy, my friends are still in their corporate outfit and they don't want to let loose because they're just like, dude, tighten up. The, who cares? We're metalheads. Who cares what, what kind of class we're in? Who cares what, what kind of, where we're living in our job? When well, we got our metal going, that's all we got. Let it out. That's, that's what, that's what made us grow as men. So, that that is what's going to be blasting out in 2014 is a new Brewer metal comedy album and it's going to crush I already did it at Metallica's Orion I did it um, in, in Germany and I did it in England and it mutilated so now I'm just going to record it and get it out there so we can so America can grasp it nice so that single is the first released piece for for this album it's going to be out in spring 2014 a whole heavy metal comedy album obviously the christmas one perfect timing here um in that christmas season and also you got some cool shit going on on epics you had that one hour special in june and laughter for all you can also yeah. get that streaming on netflix and it comes out on dvd came out on november 26 so give us a little uh, background on that special jim Again, right back to uh, the metal roots. The thing starts off with how it's time for me to grow up, and I bring my wife to a Slayer concert. <laughs> it, literally, it literally opens up the, the DVD, and then it goes into family, all family, funny. Uh, some guy described it pretty... I, I thought the best description was some guy said, Brewer is the modern-day Cosby but without the sweater, with a with a leather jacket and a Metallica shirt, which is, it's you know people watch me too and they don't realize I'm clean. I'm really the whole thing's clean, which blows their mind because you think I'm always walking on the edge and you're not sure if I'm gonna go on a rant. Uh, the only time I go, the only time I go on a rant, a filthy rant. I just got a speech from my daughter. She's uh we shot the video yesterday for Sandy coming to town. And I was dropping that bomb all up. Like, yeah, I, bug it, I, bug it. And my, I forgot my daughter was on the set. And today she gave me the whole, Dad, why, why do you say the F-bomb? I, I, I didn't know you. You understand where Dad grew up. This is the way he grew up. She's like, yeah, but 
You say it a lot. Oh, yeah, I don't do it around you and mommy. I know, I just never saw this other side of you. Yeah, but now <laughs> she thinks you're cool, Jim. Now she thinks you're cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It was weird. She didn't like it. She really didn't like it. She was, she How old like, is she? I, she's nine. She's oh, like, well, I, okay. Yeah, right. It's like, I really, I don't, I don't really bother me. It's okay, yeah, now it's all good. But on stage, or I'm getting to is on stage, um, I'm completely clean. I'm always walking on the edge, but I never curse or anything like that. So the special, this is cool, man. I, I never had this. I went to Netflix, went from Epics to Netflix, and it was the most downloaded comedy, all comedy, uh, for Netflix this year. So it's still the most downloaded. Uh, so I got pretty excited about that. I, and if you're a metalhead, you now get the end laughter for all. There's two. It's called end laughter for all because I love you, Talica. And the other reason is because anybody can watch it. You can you can sit down with your family and laugh your balls off. And that's that's what I've been thriving for for the last six years. Is like guys like us can sit down, our wives can sit down, our kids can sit down, and and everyone's attention is glued in, and we're all laughing our balls. I, I get off on I get off when people come to shows and it's like a fifteen year old, twenty five, forties, sixty, and they're like, God dang it, that was ripping. And I, I want to bring multi generations to the show. That that's what I go for, and that's what the whole sand and metal thing. I'm going for the same project. To me, this time next year, I want to wiggle for. A Adults, all metal wiggles <laughs> for adults. <laughs> Which color shirt are you gonna wear? I'm gonna go for the black. <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have all, we're gonna have the black guy, the 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 silver guy, the stud guy, and I guess the other guy would just be like, oh, shave or something. I don't know. I got need a four. I need a four. I mean, people know you, you go back to SNL 95 to 98, you were uh, one of the cast members, so that's where you kind of really uh, first got out there. You've been doing stand-up yeah. for a long time. You've been in a lot of movies and stuff like that. What's been, like, some of the uh, most, like, the things that you look back and say, hey, holy shit, that was fucking insane, man. That was a great part of my career, and that's what I want to continue to do. Um, well, definitely, definitely the SNL days where they kicked ass, but... Well, here's the thing with me. If you follow my career, I'm really, I'm always running and looking at the mountain past me. And I, and I, like, I loved Sunday Live, but I, I made, I made my, I may not have been the greatest cast member all the time, but I made uh, where everyone goes, oh, that's the, that's the guy who did Pesci and De Niro when they came on. <laughs> He said, oh, my God, the Pesci guy, the goat guy. So I made my point there. And, and movies. I don't do tons of movies. I don't get asked to do movies. But I got that half-baked, and boom, that's a cult monster figure. I swing for the fences with everything. So to answer your question, I, I, don't, I don't really look back. I, 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 I know this sounds corny, but I'm being dead serious. Like, I don't sit there and go, God Dang, SNL is great. I almost look at it like an old neighborhood. Like, oh, yeah, I remember living there. That was fun. Uh, you know, that was ballroom. Was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great time. We used to play stickball. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like, asses up, handball. I remember that. I remember that. But now, I'm always looking at the net. To me, I, I really feel this rock thing is going to be a gorilla. I hope it is because I'm in love with it. And I... I I, if the next three years I can tour doing that, I'll, I'll take that over anything. <laughs> and you know what, dude? I, got, I know how to answer you. I know how to answer. The thing that I loved the most, I mean, SNL was great. That documentary I made with my father, to me, that's the greatest thing I've ever done. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about that because to me that is just, uh, right. it's something that's so different from what yeah. the norm is. So let's get right into that. It's called More Than Me. It's uh, like you said, it's a documentary. You take your dad on tour with you and your dad was 84 during the shooting. Is he, uh, is it, is he older than that now? I mean, how long ago 90. did I finish? 90. Wow. Just oh, turned wow. 90. Wow, 90. Oh, my God. Greg, you can relate yeah. to that, right? Oh, my, my. What's that? <laughs> Greg lives with his dad too. So. I, yeah, my, my father lives with me. He don't know it. He doesn't know where, whether he's coming or going. He's 
I'm the, I'm the same thing. Shot. I'm the same thing. He, does he wear diapers and stuff? No, yeah. no, no. He actually goes to the gym, but he's shot. The phone rings, he answers the remote. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, the cell phone looks like the remote a little bit, so we stand in there, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> you know what I know? You know what I know Judge Judy is on? When my garage door is going <laughs> up and down. <laughs> That's, That's my... the same shit here. He's addicted to those judge shows, all of them. Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, right. Well, right. any judge. Right, but he's always, my dad's always got the, like you said, the wrong remote. So right, the wrong he's remote. Always gr- I'm like, this is dead. Your, the garage door is going up and down. Come on. <laughs> it's just the road. And he's staring at the refrigerator. It won't turn on. Yeah, it's, and now he doesn't walk and he craps himself. It's pretty funny. I've talked about it on stage. But, you know, I toured with him for years and years and years. And I never videotaped it. Never video. Well, I videotaped some of it. But this time I realized he was getting really old and he couldn't move. He started to get dementia. So I, I wanted to film one last hurrah with him. But the intention, that when, when I'd go on the road, a lot of people would come up to me like, bro, you bring your dad on tour? That's really, that's really cool, man. I got a whole different respect for you. And, I, you know, my dad's getting older. I don't know what to do with him. But So at first it turned into, I'm going to bring my dad. And then it turned into, well, I want everyone to be able to see what it's like to take care of your dad when he starts getting older. Because it is funny. Guys, I guess, can find the funny. But some people really struggle with that. And, mm. and there's, there's levels of struggle. The struggle is, like, my dad's a World War II vet, and, and they'll look, and, and he grew up a man's man, and he still has that military haircut. And they'll, and they can't accept that, like, wow, he's not my dad, or he doesn't remember me, or he's got the mention. People really struggle with that. And if you really carve away everything we live in, that is the natural process of society. They, they take care of us. We then go on our journey. We become who we are. But now they need to be taken care of, and we become the adult to our kids and to them. And it's, we don't, in our society, we don't know how to do that anymore. We grew up with that. You grew up with that in the Bronx and Brooklyn and all that. Yeah, upstairs was grandma, downstairs was oh, aunts, fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cousins over here around the oh, block. Yeah. Everyone took care of each other. They don't do that anymore. It's really, it really is hurtful to know that doesn't exist anymore. And like you said, man, your, your grandma died. My, my grandparents, my, my parents still live in the same house that my mother grew up in, I grew up in, and my grandparents, they passed away now. They were downstairs. So I know exactly where you're coming from with that. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the, way you, the way you talk about it, I'm, I'm a big Obie and Anthony fucking fanatic, and you, you're on there. <laughs> And, bro, you talk about this, and you even floor those guys with the whole talk, and you're so wide open about the whole shit with your mom and stuff, with the way your oh, relationship yeah. is with her, and it just, it, it blows my mind. I'm like, holy shit, this is such real-life stuff, and he's, and he's making it, I feel bad laughing my fucking ass off listening to this thing. But it's, it's funny, but it's true to life, and that's what really makes it, I think, such a special thing, and I think this documentary is amazing the way it is. Well, thanks, man. I, 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 I appreciate it. And the reason why I call it more than me is because... My whole life, he, that's all he could say to me. I want you to have more than me. I just <laughs> want you to have more than me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and like, Dad, as soon as I came out, of mom already had more than you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was really cool. You said that he never opened up about all the shit that went down in the war. You know, the big one, WW2, like Archie Bunker used to say. So you always said that that was something that he always held back, and he really didn't want to talk about that. And that's probably something that I, I would, if, if my dad was in that position, I would love to hear war stories, literally. I mean, so that must be something that was pretty pretty wild for you to have that you know, that litany of information right there, but he didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to share it with you. He would not share it, which, which, which explained to me more what he, what kind of hell he really saw. Wow. And, yeah. and it also explained to me more that he's not into glorifying any type of war whatsoever. And it also made me realize as a man, as I, as I grow as a father and as a man, how when I hear people complain and blah, 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 he never, ever complained 
You know what I went through? You know, his mother died when I didn't have a mother, and he never, ever said any attack. So when that's like a true sacrifice in life, like he never took everything he went through and put that on me as a father mm. growing up. And that, I, I, I will always have the deepest respect for him. Is it frustrating not to know all the details? Yes, but at the same time, I'm honored as a man that this man was able to guide me through life and not even expose me to that, to that horror. And I, and I respect him for it. It's, it's, and that's why I have no problem squeeze, taking my hand and cleaning his asshole with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that was, you that's know, you, you, you summed it up beautiful there, how much respect you have from. But um, we're going to have to hit a break over here. Jim, I want to just make sure that we get everything out there, right? OfficialJimBrewer.com. Facebook.com yeah. slash Jim Brewer. Any other sites you want to plug? Anything else? No, that that is it. I'm so glad you're into the song. I hope everyone, everyone oh, love it. can frustrate themselves, let it out, download an iTunes. My mom, my wife wants to redo the bathroom. She's killing me. <laughs> iTunes, uh, Pandora, and Amazon.com. We're going to be playing that song right at the end of this interview. So everybody just stay there. Don't we'll go anywhere. We're going to take a piss. We're going to take a shit during the commercial break. We're going to hear the Brewers. Santa Claus ain't coming to town. Jim, thanks so much for joining Guys, Greg and I today. Thanks for having thanks. me, man. I can't wait to hang in person. An honor. Take care. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Thanks. That's awesome. Bye. Well, Merry Christmas, boys and girls. Now, listen, I know we're excited because Santa's coming. We're going to have to go over our little list first and make sure that everyone's been a good boy and girl. Okay? <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yeah, well, I'm checking out all the kiddies' Christmas list. And you know what? I have some issues. Let's review. Listen up. Hey, little guy. How many times has mom asked you, not once, not twice, but over and over again, clean up all your toys? But you never do, do you? No. You leave them all over the place. They're in the kitchen, they're in the bathroom, they're outside, they're inside, they're in my bed. Please do as you're told. Otherwise, Santa Claus just might not make it this year. So will you do me that favor? Start cleaning up all your toys and all your clothes while you're at it. Please. Santa Claus! They're coming to town! Santa Claus! Sweet little girl, pay attention. Unfold your arms and look at me when I'm talking to you. We've discussed no social media, which means no iPod, no iPad, no computers, or Facebook, or Snapchat, or Instagram. None of it. Do you understand? Until all your schoolwork and all your chores are all done. Otherwise, Santa is going to skip right by the house. I'm not fooling, young lady, and neither is Santa. Okay? Santa Claus! They come into town! Santa Claus! They come into town! Okay, let's tighten up as a family, okay? This Christmas, we're going to get back to the true meaning, which means spreading joy and using manners, which means please and thank you and doing things that we're asked to do and not repeating ourselves over and over to the point where mom and I have both had it. Okay? Merry Christmas.
talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yeah! If you'd like to talk, call us toll free right now at 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. Fitness Rx for Men is the ultimate men's print publication, website, and radio show. More than just fitness, we'll also bring you the best news in sports, entertainment, and lifestyle. Fitness Rx for Men was established first as a magazine in 2003. Be sure to visit our website, www.fitnessrxformen.com, and check out our social media pages for up to the minute news and tips every day. It's your ultimate prescription for the perfect body. Visit FitnessRxForMen.com today. Do the adventures of Indiana Jones leave you curious about this exotic and unusual profession? If so, don't miss Indiana Jones, Myth, Reality, and 21st Century Archaeology with Dr. Joseph Schuldenrein. You'll learn about forensics, ancient civilizations, and human origins. Listen to Dr. Schuldenrein and colleagues discuss their excavations and related archaeological topics, ranging from the unique to the sublime, and yes, even the mundane. Indiana Jones, Myth, Reality, and 21st Century Archaeology, live Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, on Voice America Variety. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You are listening to Fitness Rx Radio with host Greg Valentino and Joe Piatero. If you have a question or comment for our show today, please call 1-866-472-5788. That's 1-866-472-5788. You can also send an email to jpiatero at advancedresearchmedia.com. Now, back to Fitness Rx Radio. Wow, dude, man, that fucking brewer had me fucking rolling, man. Yeah, he's a funny, he's a funny guy. I'm funny. Oh, that, was, that was good. I enjoyed that, and hope everybody checked out that song. <laughs> Listen, guys, on the preview article, I have links to all of that stuff. You can go right to the uh, iTunes page to pick up Santa Claus Ain't Coming to Town. But we have Florentine coming up at the 40 mark, but if you guys want to get in before then, one eight six six four seven two five seven eight eight. That's to get on live with Greg and Joe before we get Brewer on. Also, we're doing live tweets I'm going to start doing this every week. I just started doing this. It's hashtag FitnessRx Radio. So if you want to, I got actually a question to ask of Florentine this afternoon when I put that out there. Um, so if you guys want to just do the live tweets, you can throw the questions or you can call up uh, now before we get the guests on. But uh, next week, we actually are not going to be on the air live. And I'm kind of actually sad to say that, Greg. But we have a uh, the company advanced research media Christmas party next week. So bad timing for the party on a Monday, but it's going to be good timing when, uh, you know, we're at the party, I guess. But uh, no show next week. You're going to hear a replay of this show, but uh, we'll be back live, of course, the week after that on the 20th of we, December. We should actually broadcast the party because everybody's going to be drunk and fucked up and shit. That's probably be more funny than anything you put on the, on the, on the radio here. That might be. You never know. Somebody might slip and say something. <laughs> I've been to those parties. <laughs> Somebody might fucking have too much fucking, you know, booze or some shit. And oh, they're all going to have too much stuff. booze. Oh, uh, well. There's going to be a lot of hugging and I love yous and all that shit and the whole bit. A lot uh, of I love yous. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't know, man. What's, what's, you know, what's going on with you? What's, what's, uh, you want to get into some uh, sports shit, or what, what should we do? I am always ready for some sports shit, bro. What do you got? You want to talk well, a little about the baseball? We got some, some good stuff by the Yankees and the Mets going on. Well, you, you know me, bro. You know me with the Yankee shit. I mean, not for nothing. I'm glad Robinson Cano, don't let the door hit you in the fucking ass. He <laughs> never did shit. In the, he didn't do anything in the clutch. You know what I'm saying? I don't really... I mean, uh, he, you know... I, yeah, he's a great hitter and all that stuff, but come on. I mean, he, didn't, he, he did not hit in the clutch. You know, he, 
I mean, he, I, I'd like to see what his playoff uh, batting average is and everything. But the, the thing I didn't like is recently he, they just had an article come out where he was saying that, you know, he didn't like the fact that Joe, uh, Joe Girardi was actually batting second a lot because he felt like it was affecting his RBI, RBI totals. Way to be a team player, uh, Bobby. You know what you know I'm saying? What, you, you know what's kind of messed up about that now? Is he saying it affects his RBI totals because it bothers him that he wasn't able to be utilized the best to his advantage to help the team win? Or does he want to see his fucking stats be padded by batting oh, third, fourth, or fifth? Stat. Please, please. You, 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 you know, let me tell you something. He just cares about his own stats. If he gave a shit about even, uh, you know, being a Yankee or any of that shit, he wouldn't have fucking played the game that he played. You know what I'm saying? Not for nothing. Do you think that he's going to do 10 years on the Seattle Mariners? I doubt it. First of all. Second of all, do you think he's going to get big protection in the lineup like he did with the Yankees? I mean, no last way. year, he couldn't carry it. He did not carry that team. Please. We're, 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 you know, it, it, let me tell you something. I, I never liked his nonchalant attitude, and I always felt like he did not hit the clutch. It was many a times in the playoff that guy came up with guys on, and he swings at that fucking outside pitch that nobody can hit. You know what I'm saying? And he has that stupid shit look grin on his face, spitting out the goddamn seeds all the time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not, like, sweating that shit. You know, you know what, I mean? what is with, with Cano, he did dog a lot, and I can't stand, like, Reyes used to dog Reyes when he was the oh, match. I cannot fucking stand when a professional fucking ball player, athlete of any, in any sport, dogs like a routine ground ball and doesn't run out of fucking infield pop or something like that. Just drives me out of my freaking mind. But the one thing I have to say about uh, Robinson Cano is that the guy played every day, and I think that's going to be a, uh, something yeah. that's going to be tough. Now, you got Ellsbury, you signed him to a big, big contract. The guy, not that he's injury prone, but he's not going to play 162 games, not even close to it. There's always going to be times of the year where he is missing, and I know me and you were talking about this the other day. I know you're a big Brett Gardner guy, and if Gardner gets – either moved or he gets, you know, put to the corner or sits a lot, you're losing a big talent because you have to justify that Ellsbury contract. So that could almost be like a, you bring in a guy for all that money, but you had a kind of guy that did that kind of role already on the team Absolutely. that was already not killing you with the fucking contract. So that, it's kind of a, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I don't think they did it because they wanted to get him away from the, the Red Sox. I mean, I don't think they had no. anything to play into that at all, but... Also, the Yankees picked up Beltran. I think he's got three years left in him, and they gave him a three-year deal. So I don't think that's a big deal. But you know, how it's almost like apropos in a way, because Beltran, the night before he signed his Mets contract when he was a free agent, was flirting with the Yankees to come there for $100 million. He was going to take well, less wanted, to go to the Yankees. He wanted to go to the Yankees in the worst way. He, they were saying mm -hmm. today that I think the Diamondbacks offered him more than the Yankees. I think they offered him more money and four years, but he said no. Because I think he's a Yankee fan, that's why. Can you blame him? You know him? what? He, also, he, he sees that the Yankees are the type of organization that is going to p spend money and put guys on the field to win games. Arizona, they may spend money one year, and if it doesn't work, they're going to strip it down, and they're going to be just another also ran sub-500 team. They're not oh. going to go and not going to correct. The Yankees have this, you know, for this was an off year for the Yankees. They didn't make the playoffs. But look, they were but devastated they were by injuries. Going. Devastating injury. Yo, their replacement players were, were replaced. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's, that's nothing. But look, but look at this off season. Look now, we still know they need to address the starting pitching, and also they probably need to address something in the middle they of better. a bit of relief. They have to. But that's why I think they they want to use Gardner as bait to try to bring in the starter. But the problem with the Yankees last year, they're correcting it. behind the plate. They were atrocious. They overpaid for McCann, yeah, but he's a solid catcher. He was really a good guy on the Atlanta Braves, killed the Mets every time. So I'm glad to see him out of the National League East. But now they bring in, they needed outfielders, they brought in two outfielders. Now they've got to address the pitching staff. Yeah, but you know what, though? I, I didn't look at their outfielders being like that desperate. I mean, did they really need Beltran? I mean, he's, he's older. I would have liked to have seen him actually get a younger guy. I'm not going to really stress. I, I, I would have rather seen Sinju Chu out there because I think you'd have a lot more years with him than Beltran. The only thing I like about Beltran is he's a clutch hitter, and, he, and, he, and he's, he, he's a money ball player, and he might be renewed with the Yankees. The fact that he's a Yankee now, which you, know, you have a chance to really make your name even more legendary if you do something big. Look at, look at Raul Labanez. He only played oh, yeah. <laughs> one year. One year. But you know what? 
he hit home runs in a clutch. He hit home runs in the playoffs. He, I mean, he, he you know, he, he's actually like a, people adore him now. For what year? That's what it's, you know, and that's what being a Yankee brings. But I got to tell you something, switching real quick to the Mets. You know, not for nothing. I mean, they got Curtis Granderson, but, mm-hmm. you know, Granderson is, is not an, an average hitter. He doesn't hit for average at all. He's like 240, 220. But he's Get got the power, though. He's got a struggle. Yeah, but, dude, or you got to remember something. He played in the Yankee Stadium with short porch, you know, right field. What's going to happen in that fucking huge stadium out there in, in, in City Field? That's a big ass field. He's you know not going to hit as many home runs, especially because the American League is always thought of as a hitter's league. I know it really doesn't matter now. There's so much, you know, the, the trades and the free agency. It used to be years ago, guys stayed with teams. So National League was your pitching league. American League was your high-scoring hitting league, especially with the designated hitter around. But that's not as much of a, uh, you know, a law anymore, a rule anymore. But, yeah, his production numbers are going to go down. But the Mets, in the worst way, needed to bring in a real ball player. They needed to spend some sort of money, and they did. So I, I, I'm happy as a Mets fan Joe, with Joe, the Anderson move. Joe, Joe, he can steal bases, okay? He's a good base stealer. He's a fast runner. He's a pretty good, solid outfielder. He's a, you know, and he's actually supposed to be a very good guy in the clubhouse. Don't kid yourself. I mean, if they can, maybe he won't be swinging for the porches as much, which will bring, you know, because at one time he hit for a high lab. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that right field porch being short makes you want to hit everything out of the park. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, you swing harder and you, and you, you know, you swing in the pitches maybe you normally wouldn't swing at, you know? But I'm going to tell you, he is a solid player and they're going to love him. Yeah, club. solid play. I mean, they got a long way to go, obviously. I mean, if anybody talks about Mets, probably, you know, fighting for a wild card spot, you're fucking taking mescaline. I mean, they're not going to be a playoff team for many years, especially with Harvey out for the majority of the year with the uh, Tommy John surgery. But they are a fun team to watch. At least you have some young players you can root for. Now you're bringing in a guy like Grandison, and, you know, at least you're going to have a little fun as a Mets fan. Last year was just a fucking lost year. At least now you got something to look forward to. You see these guys develop. You see the young catcher, Dono, develop. See how his pitching staff's coming together, but uh, all of that is going to be, we're going to see what's gonna, what happens once um, things start breaking with the uh, spring training, but we're going to be headed to break in just a few, but on the other side of this break, Greg, is going to be yeah. Mr. Jim Florentine, so that's going to be uh, Florentine's one of his latest podcasts, he's talked about the whole bullying thing with the Dolphins, so I got to talk to him about that, because he sees it the same way I do, and I want to hit him up with that, uh, with that tweet that we got, and give him that question to ask. So make sure you guys check us out on the other side of this break. And we'll be right back with Jim Florentine right here, Greg and Joe. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. Fitness Rx for Men is the ultimate men's print publication, website, and radio show. More than just fitness, we'll also bring you the best news in sports, entertainment, and lifestyle. Fitness Rx for Men was established first as a magazine in 2003. Be sure to visit our website, www.fitnessrxformen.com, and check out our social media pages for up-to-the-minute news and tips every day. It's your ultimate prescription for the perfect body. Visit FitnessRxForMen.com today. Listen for MD Radio on the Voice America Variety Channel. That's Muscular Development Radio. Every Monday, your host, Sean Ray, will take you inside the world of bodybuilding and health and fitness. The show will feature Hall of Fame bodybuilders, trainers, judges, and the future champions of tomorrow. Plus, you'll be invited to participate in our call-in Ask the Pros feature. And our nutritional spotlight will feature products that can help you achieve your fitness goals. MD Radio is broadcast live Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, on the Voice America Variety Channel. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You are listening. 
listening to Fitness Rx Radio with host Greg Valentino and Joe Piatero. If you have a question or comment for our show today, please call 1 866 472 5788. That's 1 866 472 5788. You can also send an email to jpiatero at advancedresearchmedia.com. Now, back to Fitness Rx Radio. And without further ado, we have the comedy night of nights. We had Brewer on before this. Now we're going to bring on Mr. Jim Florentine. Florentine, how the fuck are you tonight? Good, man. I, I love Brewer. I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while. He's fucking, he's awesome. Oh, man, he was Fuck. great, man. He had us fucking shitting in our pants laughing so hard. So we're going we're gonna to fucking have a great time tonight. This is basically guys like to laugh, so we're going to give them a hell of a lot of laughs. So, um, Jim, you got so many cool shit going on. I mean, obviously the stand-up stuff you got going on, and also you have the um, podcast, Comedy Metal Midgets. You're also on Sirius XM on Ozzy's Boneyard channel. And uh, you can also, of course, VH1 Classics, that metal show. So why don't you give us a taste of some of the stuff that's going on in the uh, Florentine world right now? Nothing. Uh, you know, I was just <laughs> fucking Chuck E. Cheese with my son, checking out all the hot milfs. Nice. I love going there when, I was, when they were younger. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but, you know, some, there's some hot ones in my town, so... Yeah, I stayed I there an extra hour. He's, uh, he's telling me he wants to leave. I'm like, no, let's hang out a little longer. <laughs> These days, the moms are young, though. You know what I'm saying? They're not really milfs. They're like, uh, you see them 20, 21 years old. That's when I, I, that's when I take over, right, Joe? Yeah, Greg's, Greg's into the younger ones. See, I like the older ones, man. I'm a fan. Uh, I'm not I'm a well, you know, there's good, there's good and bad with both. You know, you know, I remember, the, right before, you know, I knew I was, it was time to settle down and get married. I went out on a date with this chick. She was 18. And I remember we were pulling the park a lot of a supermarket, and we pulled in, and she's like, "All right, come on, let's race to the door of the supermarket." I'm like, "No, I'm not. Ra-. Come on." She's like, "No, seriously, come on, let's race." And I'm like, "I'm not doing that." She's like, "You're old. Come on, it'll be fun." Next thing I know, I'm racing to the door to fucking Pathmark. <laughs> and on the way out, we got matching tattoos and like that fucking gumball machine in the lobby on the way out. Uh-huh. But I door and I just I knew I was like, "All right, I just I gotta." I, I got to make some changes in my life. Uh, see, I used to, when I was fucking younger, I would go to the 30 and over fucking clubs because all the fucking girls are ready to fucking get laid there. And if you go there and you're a young guy and you're dressed right and you're looking good and you fucking got the fucking gift of gab, all those fucking old broads loved it, man. So no, I always that's had true, because they knew what, yeah, it's about 30s, early 40s, something like that. They're setting their ways. They know, like, look. Just fucking, if you, if you don't bang them the first night, just give me a dinner and let's go fuck and then, you know, we'll see what happens after. I just want to get laid, fucking throw some food down my throat and I'll be good. <laughs> you know, know, instead of all, all the games the young ones play with the texting and the friggin', uh, you know, calling and all that nonsense they play, so. Jim, the older girls, though, they'll, they'll want to race you and then get to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? They'll race you into the bathroom. That's what, that's, that's that's what happens with me. <laughs> That's you know true, what I'm saying? right. They're, they're, they're the the like, older ones are more sexually experienced, too. The younger ones, you know, they could be hot, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. And, and, then, when, and then when they... As soon as they, as soon as they start sucking on your balls, you know, you're like, ugh, this chick has nothing, nothing going on. She has no clue. She probably saw her porno one for like two minutes. She goes, oh, that's what they're supposed to do? <laughs> Lick, not suck. I don't want... I don't want just, it does not, it, it's fucking paralyzed from like half of the shaft down. Don't go near it. <laughs> There's nothing there. Just fucking work the helmet. And you know, you know, you got a good one when you don't even you don't even need to lift your leg, and they got their tongue in your fucking ass, They're giving you the old swiperu. So nothing, nothing you, better. <laughs> you know, you I'll lay back like I got a diaper on. I'm holding my ankles. <laughs> Whatever I got to do to get them in there. <laughs> Bro, I tell you, man, I'm a big fucking fan of yours. Uh, you know, I'm a big O and A fan. So when you're on O and A, I'm fucking. You know, it's just it's it's really it's an extra fucking treat because you fucking bring a lot to the table everywhere you go. And um, also, I'm a metalhead from years back. We had actually had Blaze Bailey on last week, calling up live from fucking England at 1:40 a.m. his time. So nice. It was actually pretty. It was pretty cool. You know, we were talking a little maiden and shit like that. But uh, I want to talk to you. I listened to one of your newer podcasts. And I actually heard it on XM, and then I downloaded to listen to it so I can hear the full show because I caught it halfway through. When you were talking about the fucking Dolphins bullying situation and the whole thing with the pink and the NFL, and bro, let me tell you, 
it was like I heard myself talking when I heard you because I've been saying that since this shit fucking first broke that this is just a bunch of fucking bullshit and everything and I mean, obviously, I know your take on it, but why don't you give us a little, like, recap of how you felt about that whole fucking nonsense incognito uh, thing? Well, you know, as you see it unfolding, I'm I'm a Dolphin fan, too. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. um, the the, the, um, owner already said that the GM and the coach are going to be back next year, so obviously there's no, there's no, he's not getting rid of them because of incognito cracking jokes around a guy in a locker room. Incognito, they already went back and paid him for the four weeks that he was suspended, and they suspended him an extra two, and they're paying. He's basically suspended with pay. He's making $230,000 to sit home every week. They know they got nothing on him. The Dolphins just had to do something to go, all right, we, you know, when, when The View is, is having our fucking round table on bullying in the NFL, the owner of the Dolphins goes, we better do something because this is a public story. So they fucking gave, you know, gave Incognito the shaft. This shit's been going on for years. Jonathan Martin's a baby. He can't get t- taken, picked on. So I did just fucking get out of the league then. That's what they, you bust balls. You fucking hang out with your friends. You're in a locker room. That's, what you, that's all you do is bust balls. Oh, I mean, dude, we used to do that in high school, for Christ's sake. And, it, and that's in, I'm, I'm 53, man, and that was in the 70s. You know what I mean? These guys are crying over that shit now. That's, that's a disgrace. That guy's a, you're right. That guy's a pussy. You know what I mean? He's a boy. What it is, he's a mama's boy. For, right. You know, he's a mama's boy that couldn't take it because what, what happened was when he left the team, he went home and he went to his mom's house and his mom went through his cell phone and actually found that text that said the N-word no. in it. And she's I the one who released it. She's like some high-powered lawyer that went to fucking oh. Harvard, her and her, you know, the, the father. So that, he's a rich, spoiled kid that does, that, that's never been around meatheads. That's not, you know what I mean? And he's a boss, too. He's a second-round pick last year, and he's, he's basically a boss, so he's fucking failing at his job. And he just panicked, and it just, you know. Oh. It, but, but the you know what? It's the NFL's fault because, like, they, they fucking opened up. They, you know, when, they, when you put Britney Spears and the fucking Madonnas and Beyonce and whoever's playing this year, fucking Bruno San Martino, I don't even know the fucking guy's name. <laughs> when you put shit like that on to appeal to everybody, then that's when everybody's going to be talking about this bully and shit. You know, right. you know what I mean? When you try to appeal to the women and the fucking, uh, you know, and, and nerds playing fantasy football and all that bullshit, that's what you're going to get. Hockey's got a guy that just comes on the ice to fucking fight somebody. They, if, right. that, if that was, if hockey was as big, if hockey really went for the, for the, you know, everybody in America to watch their game, that, that shit would stop too. All the fighting would stop. There wouldn't be, there, there'd be a fucking pink puck. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have Dave Schultz and the Nick Fatias of the world. I tell you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Remember Nick Fatia was fucking, what an animal. No helmet, just came out and just fucking fought people. Dude, he, he won the golden gloves. He, he never stood on skates until he was 18 years old. He'd come out there and he'd drop, the, you know, he'd drop his gloves and start knocking guys out, Nicky Fatil. I love Nick Fatil. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, so, that's, so the NFL's in this situation because of that, because they just say, look, we already got every guy watching. Let's expand it more. It's like, why? Well, I, I made an example. I said, that's like, you know, giving like Doug Stanhope, like the edgiest out there comic in the world, like a, a show on NBC at 8 o'clock right before the fucking voice. Yeah. And now he's exposed to work. fucking everyone in America. And they're like, oh, my God, he's making fun of suicide and murder and rape. We've got to get this guy off the fucking TV. He knows I'm not fucking going into that. I'm not going, I'm not, I don't need that. You know what I mean? The NFL just got greedy and wanted every fucking last dollar, and that's why they're in this situation. That's like putting the Uncle Paul show on Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, some shit like that. It's like just, <laughs> just, you know, exactly. That's why I like playing <laughs> fucking comedy clubs, dark comedy clubs, where I could say whatever the hell I want. You know, I'll go on a TV show and I'll talk fucking Judas Priest and Iron Maid. I know that shit. But other than that, I don't care. Yeah, I don't need to be on fucking uh, uh, whatever that nerd show is. I forget what it is. <laughs> whatever. I, I tell you, I got, a, I got a tweet today. Somebody retweeted I, when I put it up today that you're going to be on there. Um, Stacy Ryder has the theory that Dolphins bullying situation is a secret lover's spat. I don't think so. Because that would have came out in a second. Yeah. Well, incognito, there's no way he's gay. No, no. And no, Jonathan Martin, possibly, but if he was getting bullied as, uh, you, you know, you fag, you gay, you homo, that, that would have came, that out, came out already. Yeah, yeah I actually, so, when that thing yeah, goes, I don't bro, see that happen. And I think the, um, uh, whatever his name is, Mon, what the hell was that guy's name? Uh, the college player from Notre Dame, Monteo, oh, yeah. whatever the fuck his name is. Teo. Teo, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, yeah. 
but you know, like, but but I think I don't think it, I don't think it was a love roast thing because that no, that, definitely that not. Martin's mother would have went right out. My son is gay and he's proud of yeah. it and all that shit. So I, when this no, thing first broke, I was waiting for them to give to pull and say he's the NFL's Jason Collins. I was waiting for that to come out, but that never did by now. So I, you know, I don't think I. It, I don't think but that's the, the, the bottom game. line is the NFL still not ready for a uh, gay, openly gay NFL player to not. The fans are fucking animals. They're going to yell fucking slurs at them as the guy's walking back to the locker room from the field. They, they're drunk. They're going to be. Tw- they're going to use his Twitter, his Facebook, everything else. So when he when he drops a pass and loses a game, or the guy's a receiver or whatever, he's going to get pounded. And what, yeah. everyone's going to say, "Oh my God, how look at this hate mail!" It's, All right, stop it already. <laughs> they know. Just fucking stay in the closet until they get out of football. It's the only way you're going to do it. You want to make a million dollars a game, then fucking shut your mouth until you retire. Yeah, unfortunately, that's, you know, you know, that's just the way it is. It's not going to change. You're not going to change nope. a bunch of fucking meatheads that have jet season ticket holders. Not to say fag when the guy drops a pass. Yeah, or maybe you didn't get it fucked in the ass last night. That's why you dropped it. You're not going to stop those comments. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is. That guy Martin. I think he he was basically cut from the team, or they they put him off, or whatever. I, I think he needed that as an excuse. Well. You know what it is? I'm being bullied. I can't deal with it. You know, they're fucking, you know, I can't play my game because of this guy incognito's picking on me. I think that's really what it was. It has nothing to do with him being gay. He's no, it doesn't. No, he, I guarantee you got, Jonathan Martin's not gay. Him and uh, Incognito were best buddies. Inco- they used yeah. to hang out. They'd go to clubs. They did everything together. Yeah. And uh, that's why Incognito's like, where is this coming from? Yeah. He goes, look, he sent Gabe, uh, like, you know, um, Jay Glazer from NFL's uh, Fox Sports, like 1,400 text messages, he printed them out. He goes, here, you read these and tell us if we were not friends. And yeah, Glazer hasn't you know, released them, but he's like, yeah. He goes, I read every one. They're friends. You could he, tell. He's, and he goes, I don't know where this shit's coming from. Why didn't he just tell me if he had a problem? I would have said, st- I would have said, st- I would have stopped. And as far as him using the N-word in the locker room, eight oh, friggin', there's 53 guys in the team, 42 are black. If they had a problem with him yelling and saying the N-word in the locker room, the black players would have said, hey, Richie, cut the shit, and he would have stopped. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it, it, it comes out to fucking Martin. Martin was just a fucking pussy. He's not a, he doesn't have to fucking, what it is to be a ball player, a football player. He's got a friend. Didn't you ever have a friend that's fat? You know, you pick on whatever it is. If your friend's fat, you say, come on, you fat bastard. You know, oh, if you got a big yeah. nose, you say, come on, you fucking big nose. You know what I mean? Or you're short. Hey, shorty, come on. You know, if you're black, you say, come on, you fucking black bastard. You know, and that's just the way, that's the way guys talk. You know what I mean? I love right? that. What Charles, I love what Charles Barkley said. He goes, hey, the white community is not going to tell me how I could talk to my friends. And that's fine, yeah. You know, He's like, I'm no not when I'm around my with friends. That I throw the N word around. My white friends, my black friends, whatever they throw it around, and that's the way we talk. And a white white people are not going to tell me how I could talk around my friends. And I love that, and it's true. It is true. Hey Jim, yeah. we got about two minutes left. I want to make sure we get all the plugs out there. So why don't you let the guys know out there where you're going to be, where they can get tickets for you, where they can download your stuff. Just you know, all tour dates are at jimflorentine.com, and go to my website for. Uh, my podcast, Comedy Metal Midgets, is up on iTunes and Riotcast.com. And when can they hear you on SiriusXM, Ozzy's Boneyard? Oh, I, every Thursday from 5 to 7, Eastern on Ozzy's Boneyard, Channel 38. You got to do me a favor, bro. What's I'm that? a huge fan of fucking Eddie Trunk, but he talks too much on the fucking radio, bro. You think so? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm my whole fucking ride home tonight during the commercial on ONA replay. I said, let me just see what's going on on fucking Metal Channel. And I want him here. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> I love him, but he's got to play more songs, bro. <laughs> I well, yeah. I mean, he, he his theory is like you know people are gonna hear music anywhere, so I'm gonna talk because you know people are interested in the talk. I, when I do my show, I try to keep it at two minutes. I play four songs, talk for two minutes, play another four, talk for two minutes. That's fine. Like in fucking Norton, it quick, so I you know just yeah. get in and out. Norton too when he does his show on Boneyard. So I mean that's. That's the way I like it. But I, I mean, listen, obviously, I trunk, you know, heavy metal power out of back in the W days and all of that shit. He was the first, you know, he broke ground with that stuff. But, you know, I, I want to hear a fucking song. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. Black uh, he, he, he does have a, a point, though, because it's like, he's like, look, anyone can hear on their iPod, on friggin' Pandora, you know, whatever, they, if they want to hear their songs. Yeah. So I, yeah, I get yeah. it, too. But, all right. Jim, we're going to be out of time. Listen, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening this week. Greg and Joe will be back next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Variety Channel with another edition of Fitness Rx Radio. Have a pumped week. Thank you. 
Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. 